Good afternoon, my friends. Daniel Miller here. How is everybody doing? I welcome you all to our Destiny 2 world. Also staying at home at all times and abiding by the rules which have been given to us by the scientific community and the government. And uh, indeed, spending that time indoors very, very productively and successfully. Well, I certainly am. And uh, for all of you who've been here with us for a little while, you'd probably hear on my broadcast that I've been in quarantine for four to six days already. And uh, not seen the light of day or sunshine already since the very beginning of March. And that is the only way through which we can fight this disease very successfully and vociferously and powerfully and therefore I advise everybody to do exactly the same. I'll have to turn down the music because I think the music is very very loud so bear with me I can't talk if the music is so incredibly loud. So my dear friends, we've not had Destiny here for a little while. It's been a few weeks, I think, since I had my last Destiny 2 broadcast here. And uh, it's obviously very good and great to be coming back. We've had quite a variety stream on the channel. For all of you familiar with my broadcasting, you'll know that I'm doing the Season 2 of my broadcasts. The first season ended in October of last year. And uh, we've had a wonderful year full of activities with everybody participating. It's been a very, very busy Destiny-based community. And the season two is really intending to kind of branch out a bit to you know, bring in gamers from other uh, worlds such as um, Halo and Mass Effect and Elder Scrolls and you know, you name it, The Division. That doesn't mean that we will just completely ignore Destiny or forget about Bungie masterpieces. We'll have Destiny as the backbone of the channel. Also, I streamed on Mixer for about a month and uh, I stream every, I think almost every single day for a little while, so there weren't really very lengthy streams, but I've not been happy with the platform. Primarily on the technical front, it does not perform well, it is crashing a lot, and it does not always record the broadcast, and that is unacceptable if you are a professional broadcaster. So really uh, doing the news, for instance, bulletins, and then finding out that the, you know, the, the bulletin was not properly recorded is certainly of very, very great um, disappointment and a great concern and therefore I decided just to do the news on um, Xbox platform which is uh, the mixer and then the rest we'll do here on Twitch I mean both platforms PlayStation and Xbox have access to Twitch but I've got to say that on um, my Xbox I think the Twitch platform is perhaps performing somewhat less successfully compared to mixer I'm not sure what the reason for that is and uh, we'll carry on with our Twitch channel here with the broadcast being done through Twitch 
and that will combine both platforms Xbox and PlayStation so you will not be able to tell straight away by looking at it whether we are doing it on one or the other and the idea is to kind of join the hands of the gamers from both communities in order to branch out a bit and prepare for what is to follow next year once the xCloud is released and once we are going to be looking at cross-platform gaming overall coming back to what's happening in our country today a very very grave report emerged about the number of casualties and people tragically perished due to this awful deadly corona 19 virus uh, covid 19 virus and um, the official statistics from the ONS, which is the entity that does the stats for the government, indicated today that uh, I think up to about 10th of April we were observing a figure of casualties which in fact is 41% higher than the one coming out of hospitals. So that is a devastating, devastating toll and to be aware of the fact that so many people have died so tragically is, is just absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, my heart really goes to everyone who suffered suffered uh, uh, casualties in their own family and uh, my, you're all in my thoughts and prayers as well as obviously people who sadly passed away. We all are working very, very hard to beat the virus, to do everything possible. I've been in quarantine for well more than a month and a half so it's 46 days I think and also I run a service that's dedicated to psychological help and it's open for free to anyone who has been experiencing any form of difficulty uh, related to COVID so it's done by appointment because that's connected to my other professional services which I've been running uh, for most of my adult life and um, I have to say that uh, I expect uh, regrettably for that service to be in, in a much greater demand as we are progressing but with the lockdown with the casualties as well as what is to follow because longer we stay in this dreadful ghastly um, kind of virus determined situation more difficult it will be for the economy the jobs to pick up and I don't really think I can't see the way through which the economy as we've run it could at all survive so it looks like we'll have to literally start from the very beginning from scratch and that will be very very significantly different in various countries worldwide we'll have to see how governments and all those people who are obviously the leaders of the industry uh, will run us through this and provide us with both service advice and facilities but that is for a later date well i want to say that i expect many more people to be very badly affected by the collateral of the entire situation in addition to mourning bereavement and the loss of the loved ones which really is unprecedented in, in modern history I mean the only two situations where you could in fact uh, see something similar arising were the world wars the first and second world wars that indeed had a very different effect on the community worldwide and you will remember obviously if you are an avid reader of history books obviously if you're a younger person you'll just hear from your parents and grandparents that at the end of the First World War a dreadful uh, pandemic also developed which was called Spanish flu or Spanish influenza as it's known and it did kill around 100 million people worldwide and there was no cure for it and obviously the medicine and you know the, the science was not as well developed then as it is today so in addition to the absolutely ghastly sufferings of the first world war with millions of people dying worldwide immediately at, at the end of the war uh, the world basically experienced a pandemic that killed even many more people and that was really absolutely dreadful and then unfortunately on the tail of it a major kind of um, uh, movement for kind of the change of social system developed in various parts of the world and we, we know very well what indeed uh, happened later on with the um, rise of Nazism, National Socialism and uh, the Second World War arising in consequence. So very very worrying indeed because obviously the pandemic will bring death and suffering and consequently it will bring losses of jobs, collapses of economy and you know you've seen yesterday the futures of Brent crude were minus forty dollars that's the first time in history ever since they introduced the futures trading on oil and minus 40 meant that the um, 
you know the the producers had to be paying the buyers rather than the other way around and it's just completely mad an insane situation in our country we are suffering very very greatly um, i've read a study today that came from china indicating that the covid 19 had mutated into 33 different types of viruses basically 33 different strains of this virus are operating globally and they did identify some of the strains that are incredibly deadly. They found out that the deadly strain of the virus is 270 times more pertinent in its viral load than the one which is not. Hence the explanation as to why some parts of the world have not suffered such major casualty rate compared to our country, France, the United States and Spain. And uh, they did identify uh, certain countries in Europe as being unfortunately affected by the most lethal uh, strain of this virus. Incidentally, which I found surprising, they said the Washington state in the US was having a virus which was not particularly lethal and not particularly contagious. And that was the result of their very sort of in-depth analysis over a period of months. But it really shocked me to hear that within the last two months, the virus was able to mutate into 33 different strains. That's something unprecedented. It's unbelievable and each one of those strains will have a different degree of uh, virality and indeed lethality. So that is really, really worrying, but uh, we have to live in hope. We have got to be looking forward to all that the future is going to bring. And most importantly, we as the community, uh, regardless of where we are and who we are, we've got to simply stay indoors because we know that social contact and close proximity is spreading the virus. In fact, they even did determine that um, the presence of the virus on hard surfaces is perhaps not as pertinent as originally assumed. And there's a German scientist who is one of the leading um, virologists and he said, I have a rule called six by six, six feet away, less than six seconds of talking. So remember that six by six, you've got to be away from another person uh, for at least six feet. In European terms, this is roughly two meters. And then you've got to be also not talking to anyone for longer than six seconds if you are in a closer proximity because they discovered that six seconds will be you know, long enough for that virus to be transmitted. Um, I'm got, you know, literally gutted to discover all this because in fact, that is the way some of the biological agents operate. And uh, you know, if you were a soldier and if you were taught how to behave in a war zone, you'd be told that you must be having your respirator on within six seconds if you are not to die of a biological attack and uh, uh, you know or, or, or nerve agent in fact and that's really absolutely terrifying to learn that this this virus has got that degree of pertinence it's it's absolutely incredible but we've got to be upbeat we need to keep up with our fight we've got to be thinking positively we've got to be able to think about the future and the best way we can do that as ordinary citizens is by staying indoors, using our time productively. I really, really want to, you know, make sure that our gamer friends know this is not the time to be exercising outdoors. I know the outdoors is very important. I mean, I'm a very fit, athletic type of person I'm, you know, on a regular basis, standing exercises 45 minutes a day. In most circumstances, would I be wanting to be doing jogging today? Uh, it's very simple uh, as to why, because by doing so, I am increasing the concentration of the air which is around me, you know. And I, I believe by doing so, I'm endangering other people's lives and vice versa. So that really is not the thing to do. And to do standing exercise at home, obviously, you've got to be exercising and you've got to have a, you know, a bit of fresh air coming. And it's very, very important. But it's not necessary to be doing your usual routine. For instance, what really affects me the most is that for almost two months, I've not been able to do swimming. And swimming is like the most important thing in my life and my physical health. I really can feel the difference physically because I've not been doing it. But I will survive if I don't do swimming. I will not survive if I catch this virus. So, you know, you've got to really build that mindset of a survivalist and think about, well, if you're an avid gamer, you might think of some of the games. I don't want to really throw any examples. I think it's not appropriate because the virus is deadly and attacking people in real life and, you know, taking away parents from the children and destroying families and we've heard today that more than 100 medical staff that includes doctors and nurses died as a result of the virus in the United Kingdom alone 
and that is absolutely terrifying. I mean, those people up there on the front line risking their lives to help others and they lost their lives. Every day I hear of a consultant or a senior doctor or a senior nurse or somebody who was brought in from retirement to help out and they died. And yeah, it's just it's unbelievable. It, we've got to be able to show respect uh, by uh, abiding by the rules and following the instructions and build that mindset of doing everything at home indoors. Build that mindset. It will help you psychologically to deal with anything. First of all, you will feel safer. If you're up and about, you will feel more threatened. You will feel more fearful. I mean, if you are a biochemist or if you're a microbiologist, you will know that if you're fearful, your capacity to defend against any attack is minimal. It's lessened. It's biological. So you've got to, first of all, dispense with the fear. And how will you do that? By staying indoors, protecting yourself, protecting your loved ones, protecting your family, beating the virus, preventing the spread, helping the NHS, saving lives. That is the way forward. Right, I will be watching the news conference at five o'clock, so what I need to do is, I need to crack on with the game, right? So just bear with me, I'll be back very, very shortly and we'll get on with, with the game. We have some very interesting uh, novelties in Destiny 2 starting today from six o'clock, and I'm very, very curious to see how this will work. I'll tell you all about it very, very shortly. Right, so basically we are having a new activity introduced today to Destiny 2. And this is going to be called Guardian Games, right? So from 6 o'clock p.m. today, there will be a maintenance period also beforehand. And I think we probably will be cut off as we are carrying on. Maybe not, maybe it's going to be literally at 6 o'clock, we'll see. It'll be probably quite good because I'll have uh, some time to do um, a couple of uh, uh, matches of the Crucible, which is going to be really good. And basically, the um, Guardian Gaming is a fast on approach, beginning today, 6 o'clock p.m., and we'll have Titans, Hunters, and Warlocks that will compete to prove which class is the most dedicated in Destiny 2. So basically, your entry into the competition begins with a visit to Ava, Ava Levant. Each Guardian will receive a class item to adorn while taking part in competition. So bronze, silver, and gold medals will be available to earn daily and each of which will focus on a specific game mode. So to earn medals, you will have to equip your new class item, defeat enemies, pick up laurels on the battlefield, advance your quest for the medals you desire. It's going to be a daily kind of quest to be able to do it a bit like, you know, with, um, with bounties. Uh, we fully acknowledge that uh, the class populations are a little lopsided. So hunters are so fabulous with the capes, um, that there are indeed more of them than Morlocks. So it's actually it's true. Lots of people prefer Hunters, and uh, I know for myself in Destiny 1, I'm, most of the times if I go to the Crucible, I'm, you know, used by Hunter. And uh, what's most useful uh, about a Hunter is that special skill where you tether, 
you know you tether everybody and that's really very useful if you're doing multiplayer doing it with other guys so really really cool cool special ability so to help this offset uh, so hunters do not steal the show every day medals will be weighed slightly per class to maintain an even playing field so uh, bungee are not fiddling with the numbers to force wins of uh, on alternate classes but hunters uh, will still be able to take this entire thing if they are being you know basically busy and they put enough effort into it so about the class items at daily reset you will get your cloak mark or bond and they will update to reflect what placement your team's taken so it's a very much of a team effort activity as an example if titans took the w for one day then the mark will update with a wonderful gold sigil so with warlocks in a second and hunters in a third the uh, the class items would be updated to feature silver and bronze respectively so if you are entering the uh, blog of bungees you'll be able to get all that information beautiful really beautiful designs it'd be really wonderful to see some of the guys walking around in those new cloaks and emblems uh, so um what's the ultimate prize at the end of the event your daily placement will be combined for a final score so it's a bit competitive depending on your team standings your class items will be locked to their respective placements for the remainder of the year if you're looking for more ways to represent your class ava has it covered each week you'll be offered a free quest to earn an exotic or shell one theme to each guardian class complete this quest every week to collect all three Additionally, a new exotic machine gun will become available during this event. Uh, we look forward to seeing what mayhem this uh, um, tool will be bringing. Eververse will also have some items in store for the event. A single finisher is going to be available for silver only, whilst all other items may be purchased with Bright Dust as they appear on the storefront. Bright Dust to match previous seasonal event. Guardian Games begins upon the weekly reset uh, this Tuesday, which is today. 10 a.m. Pacific, that is 1800 hours uh, UK time. Make sure to launch your game a little early to grab the required update, and that we are going to be getting later today. So, that's all the news, and I really thought maybe we'd be able to crack on with some of it straight away, but unfortunately, it's not up and running until sometime in the evening. So, maybe tonight we have a bit of fun. I had a lot of fun yesterday doing the Crucible here, and uh, kind of reacquainted with the whole thing it was really good fun and uh, we'll do exactly the same right now so done all the admin we are all ready to crack on a couple of matches maybe three or four matches before we uh before i have to depart for the news conference and then we'll get back into the uh swinging and grooves of destiny world later today this week is going to be entirely dedicated to destiny so for all of our friends, fans and followers and uh, channel members, that is exactly what we'll do. Destiny is fully back. And I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed all the other games. My goodness, I've played so many. I don't think I've ever played that many games in my whole life. And that's been really, really good fun. And also, I've never played a game as extensively as I've done with Destiny. More than 200, uh, 2,000 hours both games combined so that's really quite something you know and it's more than 2,000 hours of uh, broadcasting on Twitch with those two games well mind you I did stream some other games as well so I would like to say 100% but um, definitely a very very extensive type of experience all right so we've been uh, to all the other places and we are going to go to the crucible instantly and that means control is going to be our best bet and let's just crack on and see what we can do there There's one thing I noticed yesterday as I was waiting uh, was the very lengthy waiting period, which indeed was not the case previously for any Crucible activity in the sequel. So I don't know what's going on. Is it that they reduced the number of rooms or that um, we have um, fewer people participating? I'm, I'd be surprised because the Crucible is a very, very popular activity generally. We've had uh, plenty of... Uh, activity here and I've got to say well that will displease my friends who are dedicated still to the original game I really don't like the crucible in destiny one it's a very very tight death match and mechanically it doesn't work too well for people who are on non-fiber optic broadband whilst uh, the destiny 2 crucible has been tweaked 
and it does work quite well for the vast majority and it works quite well for me which is surprising considering that I have very very poor quality internet in my local area so that's really pretty good and to put in perspective if I'm doing Destiny 1 due to the tech stuff I get maybe two or three kills six at most and get obliter obliterated all the time because the lag's massive and my hits don't register and in here on average I'm getting anything between 15 and 30 so that's a tremendous difference and I'm definitely very very glad because I have a lot of fun meet new friends and you know we're just really rock and roll in here it's one very good team yesterday we've had really good scores <clears throat> and I don't do it really for you know the competition is just purely for fun and what I like doing is when I see that somebody is really um, a good competitive player and really fast and then they get surprised that Cerberus is so mighty because then they would never think that Cerberus is so powerful but actually for somebody who is on a poorer quality internet uh, Cerberus is extremely deadly because it has like five barrels and it shoots like a lot of lead within a confined area so you can just uh, you know uh, you can just basically point your weapon to the enemy and kind of move it left to right a bit and they'll be sprayed with bullets and it's most frustrating because they can see that there's a lag and then they would be able to eliminate me and then literally within a split second they all die and yesterday I had some triple kills you know it was quite incredible triple kills were both with my uh, Cerberus as well as with Nova Bomb so that was really really good really enjoyed it I found it to be uh, very rewarding and I've been like the top player in several teams yesterday which tells me that perhaps uh, you would very frequently end up in, in a team of very experienced veterans of the Crucible who also were playing on the best possible internet speeds and that is a disaster for anyone else you know and uh, now that's not the case we've, we've had I mean I could see yesterday there were quite a few people in the arena who were perhaps not of the top-notch skill you could you could you could see there was some degree of lack of experience in there but you know it's good fun either way I like it right come on let's crack on our first match is before us was stock fell winter peak the zones are yours if you fight for them guardian well, we are certainly going to be fighting for those eyes. And I died for no reason at all. Zone C captured. Enemy claimed zone B. Enemy claimed zone A. You're falling behind. Well, that's not too bad. Not for them. Gains the lead. Zone A captured. You have advantage. Where is he? You captured Zone B. That's a power play. You took them, now hold them. Zone C lost. Zone A lost. Oh. I saw him though, but <laughs> I was still recovering from the other guy, you know. See me. Zone A captured. You have zone advantage. Okay. Oh, we're doing all right. Thirty sixteen. Zone Which B. Are they going to be there? All three of them, I think. Oh. 
Oh no, he was he was able to resist this. Go away. I don't believe it. That's too bad. Go away. He didn't see me at all. Zone B captured. Just busy chasing my mate. You have advantage. Where is gone? Okay. Mm, right. The other team's also chasing us. Look at this. It's not too good, is it? Thought we should have had a better. Look at this. Didn't see me at all. Not looking. It's just chasing his scores. Oh, there he is. Ah, that dreadful hammer soul. That dreadful hammer soul. We must capture that control point. I didn't get him this time. That's too bad. And they, oh, they're catching up. They're already. So where is he? Must have died. Mm. That's not fun. Zone A lost. advantage the lead is lost but the battle is still close you have advantage five minutes could go your way could go theirs you're in the lead mm -hmm. right. zone C lost Good. My mate finished him off because I was literally needing a reload. Zone A captured. King. King Ragnar. Crafty. That was crafty. What's this? Grenade. Grenade. A soul specialist. Zone C captured. That's a power play. You took them. Now hold them. Zone okay, B. We are needed that. So we just need to be capturing control runs oh he's got a shield that's so annoying zone C lost okay we're doing right now you're pulling ahead keep it that way three minutes Mm. 
Come on. The enemy wants vengeance. Deny. Yeah, he's lagging as well, I think. From what I can see. Well, this is a tight match, you know. Zone B. You have zone advantage. Oh, there he is. He didn't see me. Oh, that I got him before his super was activated. Mm -hmm. Zone A lost. We are really, really close to losing this. I don't believe it, it's square. Zone A captured. Zone B lost. The enemy has closed the gap. Zone advantage is yours. You've got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. So where are they? Come on. Wasted it in there. You're defeated. Fight again. Persistence is key. No, there was something wrong in there. It was like literally 124 24. So, so there's something wrong in there. scores either, which is annoying. Probably just enough time to uh, have another match and then we'll depart and come back later after the maintenance and uh, it's a good warm up really before we get into Guardian games. Quite curious to see how this will, this is going to work. The Guardian games will start in the evening today. They'll have maintenance I think after five. So everyone who's with us remember to uh, enter Destiny earlier in order to get an update. It's going to take a little while I think and then we can just crack on with some feisty activity. I'm really curious to see how Guardian Games are going to work because they're talking about teamwork and maybe we can bring in a few of our guys and do it together. Got to love Destiny. Not possible to feel otherwise. So many different avenues of gameplay in here. You can do all sorts of things. And it's really becoming a game which is tailored to everyone's taste. What I particularly like is the level of customization. So if you want to be doing a specific type of uh, activity, you want to be protected against certain weapons, you can really customize. We have to work hard 
because the mods are not that easy to get and um, once you change your equipment the mods will stay so you'll be able to equip any of those and just remember to find your own personal preferences and keep them in your own favorite loadout a bit hard to remember all the items because there are so many and uh, it's fun isn't it you think of uh, Call of Duty Warzone Mod Warfare you can be shipping your favorite gear so you don't have to be looking for the weapon elsewhere it's a really really cool addition to what otherwise is a hunt for the best kit and uh, we'll have to get back to it I played quite a lot of uh, Warzone during this first couple of weeks and um, not done any of it now for a little while but I love it I think it's a great battle royale game I really enjoyed my adventure games in recent weeks you know reminded myself how much I liked games with a good story it's a different experience PvP and this sort of thing is just all about skill speed it's about uh, um, experience and practice whilst soaking up the story is something completely different and uh, I love all sorts of games. I don't have a personal preference, just one. You know, I love adventure games, I like uh, puzzles, I like the old PC games, I like, um, I guess my, I'm always inclined towards space opera with a lot of RPG, or, you know, RPG with a lot of content on the story front with dialogue and all the games in recent years, like um, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, you know, Mass Effect Trilogy. Um, all these kinds of games and I played uh, Wanting Dream games as well here on my channel I think yeah I did and these are really my personal favorites when you have a lot of story and a lot of activity and sort of blends the best of the two worlds together everyone from our D Division 2 and Division 1 community remember that you have the sequel D Division 2 offered on the price of £7.99 through PlayStation Store. So if you are one of the guys who is doing freebies, then make sure you purchase it before the 29th of April. And it'll be yours forever, you know? To buy some extra content with Seasons, but you know, you'll do that in due course. The base game will provide you with plenty of activity. Well, we played The Division 2, we played Ghost Recon, we played Battle Royale, and you know, we played all sorts in here. It's been a busy, busy couple of years of uh, gaming archaeology. Control. Capture and defend, Guardian. That's going to be the last match before the maintenance, I think. Oop. Didn't see me. Enemy claimed zone B. Very important to remain in movement, in motion all the time, you know, in these games, because obviously if you're static, then. Some of the more experienced players will just obliterate you. Where's he gone? Zone A lost. Mm, I didn't see him. Where was he? Oh, there. Two. Blood for blood. See, so there's a massive lag there. So, the last game didn't provide us with the correct score. We were like 24 24, and then suddenly we were given like 146 given to the opponent. So, there was, there was a serious problem in that.
Let's see if I'm in there. Zone A lost. Zone C captured. Your opponents are pulling away. Cerberus is awesome. Get those zones back. I should have gone elsewhere. Chumsy. Zone C lost. It's a power play. Get those zones back. Why didn't he die? Mm. He hit me just once with that mail and I was dead. The scoring is wrong. Seriously glitched now. against him before. So it's just Mike's. I've seen enough. I'm calling this one. Your no, 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 no. There's something wrong there with... Uh, the score. It just happened in the last game as well. It's not possible. No, 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 no. I don't believe this. I, I don't find it right. I don't find it to be right, really. Always prior to the maintenance, you get some glitches, and obviously this is one of those situations where we get that. All right. So let me see very quickly. I want to see what. Uh, Items are picked up if these are of any interest. 951s, definitely not. 952 there. No. Infuse these very quickly. Two of those, okay, two fifty one, so that's all good. One thirty opponents defeated. All right, my friends. Well, thanks very much for popping in, having a look. We'll carry on with our adventure after the maintenance. That's going to be after six o'clock p.m. today, and definitely do come back and join us and say hello and maybe join us in the online gameplay we've not had any destiny 2 activities here for a little while and as i said this week is going to be dedicated to destiny so destiny literally back to back and um i look forward to all the activities that will pop up as a result of able events inclusion today after six o'clock providing us with uh, guardian games so that will be really exciting and really look forward to that so See you later on and take care, stay healthy, stay indoors. Remember, hashtag stay indoors UK, hashtag um, stay at home UK, hashtag protect the NHS, hashtag save lives by doing so, staying at home, and then hashtag be a hero. You are a hero because you're protecting lives by staying at home and protecting the NHS as well as your loved ones, as well as yourself. Remember that, stay at home, keep safe, and see you later.